Well, today I like to do something a little different than I've done in the past. Normally, as you know, I'm not usually one just to stand in front of this camera and flap my jaw. Generally, I like to take the camera and post it to the side and let you see what I do. But today is a little different. And that difference is this video is video number 100. Who'd have thunk? I first signed up for YouTube back in 2011, but I never posted a video until I think it was early of 2016 when I started doing the Borax Wagons. So in the last two years is really where I started being a little more active in the YouTube community and that was because of the Borax Project. So in the last two years we are at video number 100. Basically I, I do one video a week as you all know. I schedule my videos to post at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every Friday. And so I just wanted to say I appreciate all you who have found this site that have supported the site, supported me, and your comments have supported me and been a great encouragement. Uh, it, it's hard to even verbalize or vocalize what that means to me. Um, I, I do go through every week and, and read them. I don't respond to all of them, and you know all that. But um, I appreciate them, and I try to answer the questions as I run across them. Well, as you become maybe accustomed to hearing me at the end of my videos, I usually close it out with, thanks for watching. And I do mean that. I do appreciate thanks for watching. You know, I appreciate the subscribers, but as I, as I watch different channels, it's the viewers, not just the subscribers, it's the viewers, it's the watchers that make YouTube work. Um, you know, so somebody can have a million subscribers, but oftentimes they're only getting, you know, maybe 100,000 uh, viewers. Well, that's, you know, like 10%. Well, what I've noticed on this channel here is, you know, we've just crossed the mark of 40,000 subscribers. But our viewer ratio is fairly high. You know, it's 25, 30, 40,000. You know, in fact, I just crossed on this channel, we just crossed 10 million views on 100 videos. This will be the 100th. You know what, that average is 100,000 views per video. That is phenomenal to me. And it's because of watchers not just subscribers. So when I say at the end of the videos, thanks for watching, I really do mean thanks for watching. But in response, I've had a number of you say, you know, thanks for putting the videos together. And I appreciate that. Uh, it does take time. It does add to my time here in the shop, sure, and you all know that. But, um, more than just saying that thanks, there's been a number that have sent things my way. Oftentimes they are wagon related. They're things that I could use, woodworking related, what all. And so today, today as part of this 100th video and just saying thank you again, I want to acknowledge those of you who have sent things my way and uh, just say thank you back. So that's what I'm going to do today in this video is show the rest of you what some have done and encourage you to support them as they have helped support the YouTube community. So let's see what they've brought. Well, one of the things sent up was this box of wood turning gouges and chisels. This is an old set that needed a new home. And this was sent up by the Fantasy Island Toys in Fairhope, Alabama. So we'll find a good use for these. There's some nice wide chisels. 
some good skews and, and gouges will put them to good use. Well another item that was sent my way is this pair of scissors or actually a pair of shears. And this was sent by Dave DeLang. I have been following your YouTube channel for a year or so after first seeing it maybe two years ago. I've got an appreciation gift for you if you want it. It's a big pair of scissors that you might find useful in the upholstery side of your work. It's about 15 inches long overall with 10 inch blades. As far as I can tell, it's in very good shape. I found it on the side of the road about 10 years ago and have never really had a use for it. I rode mot motorcycles so I can spot junk that a car driver will miss or not bother to pick up. I've attached a picture. If you want it, just respond and I'll send it to you. If I don't hear back, I'll assume you can't use it. Obviously, I responded. Either way, thank you for the content you share with us. You are definitely one of my top two favorite channels. The other is This Old Tony. He's a fun sight. If you want to know who you're in competition with, if you haven't already watched him, you should. He has probably the best production value of any how-to type videos. And is, he is the only literal laugh-out-loud channel I've seen. I would agree with that. Tony's got a great sense of humor. So these are the scissors that Dave DeLang sent up. I don't have a pair that are anywhere close to that long in the blade, 10 inch long blades. So thanks Dave. I'll find a place where I'll put them to use. Well, the next thing I'd like to share with you is this was sent from Don Dotson out in Oregon. Actually, his long, longtime friend made these. His friend's name is Mike McMacken. Well, Mike is a scroll saw artist, and he made these two name tags for my wife and I. Isn't that pretty amazing? Pretty exact, pretty amazing handiwork. Get these put back together again here. Once again, the friend of Don Dotson, Mike McMacken, out in Oregon. Thank you both, Mike and Don. Well, the next thing I want to share with you is a restored tool that was sent to me from John, who operates Scout Crafter channel on YouTube. My name is John Nugenbauer. I was one of the winners of your subscriber contest. I wanted to thank you for the beautiful wood, but also for all the instructional instruction you provide through your videos. I too have a small channel on YouTube where I do small tool restorations. So to thank you for your generosity, I am sending you this wrench. I hope you can enjoy it in good health. So this is from John, and if you go to Scout Crafters, I'll bring this up here, his video is Wrench for a Wheelwright, and his, his channel is Scout Crafter. Go check him out. I purposely waited to open this up until I was on camera. I did go to his site and I watched the restoration of this wrench. So I kind of got a sneak preview, but I wanted to just open this up on camera to see the first time 
along with all you folks. Look at that. Wow. Smooth as silk. Feel that. Wow, that is so cool. Diamond tool. All hands forged. I don't have new tools that work this smooth. Well done job, John. So again, this is from John Neugebauer from Scout Crafter. Go check him out. He has a really cool site restoring these old tools. Thanks again, John. Well, the next thing I'd like to share with you that was brought by is this trivet. This is about a 3 8 thick piece of steel this was made from Dave Harper. Let me show you his touch mark here. It's really cool. See DMH. I'm not sure what your middle name is, Dave, but Dave Harper. But Dave explained to me that he cuts out pieces from propane tanks. He antiques it into the, under the power hammer. Then he has created stamping dies for different styles of feet. And this one is, a, is, is an elk hoof print. He has them for wolves, for deer, uh, cats, multiple different things. So Dave's site is longstorystudio.com. He operates over there in Darby, Montana. It's western Montana. He has multiple things. Dave is a real artist when it comes to metal sculptures. You'll see bears and all sorts of things. Go to his site and check him out. Dave Harper at longstorystudio.com is one handy man with some iron. Thanks, Dave. Well, the next thing I have to share with you is this book. Many of you have suggested that I read this book. And as it so happens, I read it years ago. The Wheelwright Shop. This is a story of a wheelwright shop in England in the 1800s. Uh, George Sturt it's well worth the read. And I'm going to show you what was sent to me by Jim Connolly. I've subscribed to your YouTube channel since around the Borax Wagon Project. I also build wheels, bicycle wheels, which I ride. I was inspired a long time ago to build wheels. I learned from a bicycle guy named Sheldon Brown. I felt a kindred spirit when I first read The Wheelwright's Shop by George, George Sturt. Terms like dish and spoke length are common. I could feel the heat when he talked about firing the iron. So the point is, I think this book would be a great giveaway, maybe to celebrate the completion of the Spanish Cannon Wheel series. All the best. Regards, Jim Connolly. What I thought I would do, would do something similar for the 100th video. If you're interested in this book, if you want to send me your name and address through the email, we'll send it to somebody. And last time I think I did just continental US. This time, since I can send this book by media mail, um, we'll just open it up to anybody that's interested. So if you're interested in this book, if you haven't read it, then send me an email either at dave at inglescoachshop.com or ingles underscore coach at hotmail.com. I'll put both the links underneath. And send me your name and your, your uh, mailing address and we'll put them in a hat. Oh, we'll do this for about a week or so and we'll send it to somebody. 
Well, the next thing I have here is a letter from Steve Chase. Steve Chase operates stevechasewoodworking.com in Midland, Texas. He writes, I can't tell you how much I enjoy watching you display your woodworking and blacksmith skills. One of your YouTube videos talked about how you gave up TV, watching TV in the late 1990s. Well, you need to know that besides Gunsmoke reruns and some old movies, Dave Engel is the man I like to watch. I went to Steve's site, and you need to go check him out, stevechasewoodworking.com, and see some of the things that Steve does. He's quite the artisan. See these curved, armed chairs? He's quite the woodworker. Go check him out. Steve sent up a check in support, helping defray some of the expenses and putting on these videos. And he was a very pleasant man to visit with as I talked with him on the phone. So go check him out. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. So that's just what makes it extra special. Steve Chase, another one that has sent a gift up in the form of a check has been Dwayne and Ann Lundgren out of Las Vegas, Nevada. They've been great supporters, uh, regular commenters on the video. They've both stopped by and visited. Uh, they've kind of has developed into a pretty nice friendship, uh, albeit has to be kind of long distance. But it's, it's support like this that just really helps encourage me that it makes it worth it. Does that make sense? Uh, Dwayne was the first individual that sent up a check. And as I told him that, you know, sometimes when you start in business, sometimes down the road, you think, oh, I should have saved that first check or that first dollar that I made. Well, Dwayne and Ann's check, actually, I put, I have a glass top on top of my desk, and it's under that glass top as my first supporter's check of appreciation. Um, that's, that's the extra special part, part of, of Dwayne and Ann's check, is the first one I received. And it, it was impactful on Diane and I, that somebody simply from watching a YouTube channel would send a contribution to say thank you. I know you have expenses. This is to help cover that, and that's what Steve did. And it just it really it really touches us that you know we don't get to see your faces most of the time. You get to see my ugly mug. Uh, hopefully, just my hands most of the time, but uh, it means a lot. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. So the next one I want to share with you is this handsaw that was sent up to me from Casper, Wyoming. And this was sent up by John Cole. Are you interested in having the saw live out its natural life in your shop? It is extremely sharp and eager to go to work. Tis time in my life to get rid of items I no longer can use. Let me know if you want it and I shall mail it to you. I can send more photos or look up distant docking saw on Google. I so enjoy watching the videos you make. Then a little more history of the saw, Henry Distin and Sons Incorporated, a one man number 196 docking or trimming saw was used for heavy timber construction, building docks and in mining construction. This type of saw was often used issued to electrical linemen who used them to trim tree branches out of the right-of-way. This saw was made in the early 1900s into the late 1920s. And an interesting part of this saw is the cast handle permanently riveted onto the blade. So thank you to John who is willing to send this docking saw up here where it will be proudly displayed if John only knew my tender spot for old tools which I think you're all becoming a little more aware of. Thanks John. So I have an, another note here and I guess I really don't have the full note on the email 
but this is from a Christopher Harris who lives in Queensland, Australia. He sent us an email here uh, a week or so back that he takes silver, silver coins, what he called junk silver, and he smelts it down and makes it into wire, and then he builds jewelry from this silver wire. And he sent us an email and says, you know, I don't think you're probably the type of guy that really likes to wear much jewelry, but I know you have a daughter that probably would, and I would be willing to make her a bracelet if you would send me her wrist size. So we talked to Janelle, our daughter, and you've seen her in the video, um, Blacksmithing with a Woman's Touch, I think is what I called it. And so anyway, she took her wrist size and we emailed back. Well, we just got an email back, I think it was this morning, that said that uh, Christopher had this bracelet done and he was going to mail it up. So we haven't received it yet, but it's another one of those kind gestures that, that is just um, kind of humbling and really makes an impression. I guess that's how you say it. Um, it's just amazing to us. So just a, a heads up and a thank you to Christopher Harris for the bracelets that's coming. And I know Janelle's going to love it. So the next thing I want to show you is these two skeins that were sent. Get them up here on the table so you can see them a little more clearly. Well, these two skeins were sent up by Jim and Yvonne Huffman. And they write, Hi, I'm not sure if you remember my call about two weeks ago. It was concerning two 15 and a half inch wagon axle ends that we found that we brought home to Sunnyside, Washington in 1999. They sat outside ever since, and as I watched more and more of your YouTube programs concerning the repair and rebuilding of the heritage of our country, I suddenly came to the conclusion that neither one of my kids would want them or appreciate them if they were given to them. I talked it over with my wife, Yvonne, and we both came to the same decision, and that was to ship them to your coach shop in Joliet, Montana. I believe I told you that all I wanted in return was a photo of the project in which you used them. So we appreciate it, Jim and Yvonne. When we find that just right special wagon that comes along that needs these skeins that fit them, we'll not only make a video, we'll make sure we let you know and send you a picture. Thanks again. Now there's another individual that I would like to say a special thanks to. And he's probably going to cringe when I do this, but sorry Jack, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> Jack King in Galveston, Houston. You have been quite an inspiration to me. And I've got to show you a, a close-up of what Jack does. Meet me at La King's Confectionery, old-fashioned ice cream parlor and candy factory on the old historic strand, old-time fountain delights, see candy being made. They're in Galveston Island, Texas. This gives a brief overview of their business, and this, LakingsConfectionery.com, is where you find them. You want the good stuff? Be sure to look them up. And I have to tell you that Jack has become a real joy to converse with over the phone and through the email. Jack takes some old candy equipment that's no longer in business, no longer used, and he takes it apart and puts it back together to make wagon building equipment. Tire rollers, uh, all different things, I guess. Tyler, tire rollers what sticks in my mind right now. But you know, Jack thinks kind of like I do. I go to my scrap pile in my junkyard out back and think, how can I use that for this strange idea I got going through my head? So Jack, just thank you for, uh, you sent up 
three or four different bags and boxes of candy and chocolates and uh, it's, yeah, it's way too fattening for somebody my age. But it's just been really a pleasure to get to know you and I just appreciate your gifts of gratitude. You think you're stealing from me, you're not stealing from me. I, I just so much appreciate Sharon and, and you, you kind of thrill me to, to see your enthusiasm and your encouragement and excitement in working on your wagons, your military uh, type stuff. So thanks Jack, I appreciate you. So I think the last thing I have to share in different videos you have all seen me use what different tools I have here in the shop. And you probably have become aware that I'm kind of a Makita fan. In fact I have a 4 inch hand grinder here and I'm going to close in on this a little closer. This is a Makita hand grinder that they don't make anymore. It's all steel bodied. I bought this one used from a tool salesman in 1980. I've had it rebuilt, re new bearings, new brushes, uh, I think maybe I've stuck a switch in it, I've had a number of cords on it. It was my introduction to Makita tools and I have not stopped using Makita tools since. Now some of you might think, well this smells like a sponsor paid advertisement. It's not. I got a box last week, showed up with uh, through FedEx and this box had Makita written on the side of it, their signage on the box, and I didn't think too much about it. You know, we, I use those kind of boxes to reship out all the time, and I, I kind of assumed that it was probably somebody shipping something in. You know, because I have used, I have a drawer full over here of Makita tools. This, uh, heavy half inch drill is a real wrist twister. It's the one I use on my duplicating lathe. I have cordless drills, impact drills, lights. I have a four and a half inch grinder over here on my duplicating lathe that you watch me make car spokes. I have two Makita grinders, a four and a half inch and a seven inch back on my welding table. I have used Makita tools for the duration of my almost 40 years here. I have gone to different tools. I've used a variety of tools. I've used uh, Makita, Milwaukee, DeWalt, Bosch, I think some of the other ones. You know, for the most part, I try to stay to a commercial quality, heavy duty uh, type of tool because I use them. I use them hard. This isn't a handyman home, home shop type of deal. They get used hard. And Makita has always stood up well. So like I said, you think this is probably a paid commercial for Makita? It's not. I don't get paid by anybody to do or say anything on this channel. Uh, kind of old enough and order enough, yeah, you're not going to buy me off that way. I know a lot of channels are paid for by sponsors and that's cool, but that's not why I started doing YouTube. I started doing YouTube to share something that you're not going to find anywhere else. And it's comfortable for me to say still yet on a weekly basis you're not going to find it anywhere else. Well, this is the box that showed up in the last week. Well, I first looked at the label, and this says it comes from Donald Metz. Now, well, I don't know any Donald Metz. Let's see what's in here. And I opened it up, 
and found a note. Now I'm going to focus this in again so you can see a little bit what he says. Dave, enjoy your videos. Watch them all. Noticed you use our tools and just wanted to send you some gifts. Keep up the good work, Don Metz. So out of the blue shows up this little box from a company that I have used for 40 years. There's a shirt. He sent some hats. He must know that I'm getting older and I have a tougher time to see because there's a lamp in there that will be the cat's meow to my aging eyes. There's a Makita utility knife, kind of these clip knife, changeable blades. There is a Makita multi-tool. And in this box here, my first thought when I pulled it out that it was a water jug, but upon closer inspection, I think it's a thermos. And like I say, it was unexpected, uh, unannounced, just a free gratis, I see you use our tools, Here's something just to say thanks. You know, so this, like I say, this isn't paid for by Makita or whatever. It's just honest up and up. I have liked Makita tools for a long time. And so this little gratuity, just show of appreciation, um, I was pretty impressed by. Um, so I just say thank you to you, Donald or Don Metz, for your thoughtfulness and recognition that I like your tools. And uh, I'm not soliciting anything past that. You're just in the group of people that just warm our hearts to send something and say, I like your videos, keep it up. So I appreciate that. So this is kind of the wind up of video number 100. It's probably not going to be on the best sellers list. <laughs> but um, if you're interested in that book, The Wheelwright Shop, go ahead and send us your name and address uh, via email. Over the next week uh, or so, you know, we'll kind of keep it pretty short term. But um, once again, just say appreciate you watching. Um, 40,000 subscribers, start of a new year 2019, just topped 10 million views, video number 100. I guess we'll just keep going from there. So once again, thanks for watching.